In this lecture, we'll be looking at a period of Japanese history known as the Tokugawa era, which is named after an individual known as the Third Great Unifier, Tokugawa Ieyasu. This is a period of greater uh, domestic stability with significant um, influence on later Japanese nationalism and culture, and it is also the last period of uh, Japanese feudalism. Some historians prefer not to use the terms feudal or feudalism when discussing Japanese history. They argue, uh, with merit I think, that uh, Japanese social and political structures were heavily dependent upon powerful families as opposed to European feudalism, which was based on a set of uh, mutual obligations in which family ties were less important than the loyalty of vassals to lords. In addition, uh, for the most part, European monarchs possessed more centralized power than Japanese emperors or even shoguns. Um, however, um, our textbooks use the term, and since there are many similarities between the two systems, we'll be using the terms feudal and feudalism in this course. As we will see, there were also uh, significant differences in the role of agricultural producers uh, between the uh, European and the Japanese systems. Unlike European feudalism with serfs and peasants at the bottom of the uh, social pyramid, the Japanese feudal class structure uh, featured merchants and townspeople at the lowest levels. At times, merchants were considered almost parasitic since they did not actually produce a good or, or uh, service, but rather factored in profits for their own income, according to uh, traditional Japanese culture. Confucian traditions stress the importance of the productive members of society. So farmers and fishermen typically possessed higher socioeconomic status than merchants in Japan going into the Tokugawa era. This would change by the end of the Tokugawa era, though, as we'll discuss. Uh, again, this is very different from European traditions where land was much more abundant and agriculturalists were not as highly valued. Um, at the uh, sort of outside the uh, social hierarchy were groups known as the Eta, the outcasts. Uh, today they're called Burakumen, but either... Either one of those terms is a pejorative, and I would avoid it. Uh, these were positions or lines of work that were tainted with death or impurity, such as uh, executioners, butchers, undertakers, uh, people who worked in slaughterhouses, or uh, tanners of hides. The term samurai translates as to serve. Originally, the samurai were the warrior class, and they served the daimyo, who we'll talk about in the next slide. Uh, feudal Japanese society was dominated by the samurai warrior class. Although samurai were only about 10% of the population, they possessed considerable power. Uh, when a samurai passed on the street, for example, members of lower classes were supposed to bow and to demonstrate respect. If they refused to bow, uh, the samurai was legally entitled to decapitate the offending person. That law changed over time. Uh, gradually, samurai in the Tokugawa era became state administrators, or else they became what were known as ronin, R-O-N-I-N. Uh, this is a term that translates something like wave man and refers to a samurai without a master. So wave man gives you that, uh, that sense of being somewhat socially adrift. Uh, the samurai followed a set of rules that are known as bushido, B-U-S-H-I-D-O, some of the expectations of the Bushido Code were as follows, uh, frugality, um, so not being wasteful of money, loyalty, particularly to um, the daimyo, uh, a mastery of the martial arts, um, honor to the death, and uh, if a samurai failed to uphold his honor, he could only regain it, regain it by performing seppuku, S-E-P-P-U-K-U, the ritual suicide. And uh, as indicated, the um, samurai were subservient to the daimyo. The term daimyo uh, translates in practice as great name, great name, but the etymological roots of the word have more to do with large land holdings. Uh, the term emerged in wide usage in the 10th century CE. Daimyo possessed military, executive, and police powers, and they were akin to something like a combination perhaps of a general and a governor in American traditions. Uh, powerful territorial rulers uh, were the daimyo. They were much like uh, European lords. 
Uh, daimyo controlled land usage, they constructed castles, they retained warriors, agriculturalists, and craftsmen on their territory. Um, their land holdings were known as Han, H-A-N. Uh, the daimyo often hired uh, samurai to guard land or other uh, possessions. Typically they paid the samurai in land or food, as few daimyo, especially early on in the feudal eras, could afford to pay the samurai in cash. This would change later in the Tokugawa era, and uh, uh, samurai became dependent upon uh, cash subsidies from the daimyo. Uh, while daimyo possessed autonomy in their own han, they were still subordinate to the central authority. Um, the leading administrative and governmental official um, after the emperor was the shogun. This is a shortened form of the term sei taishogun, which translates roughly as military commander or general. Um, the sei taishogun is more like a great general who subdues barbarians. Um, this was often, but not always, a hereditary title passed from father to eldest son. Nominally, the shogun was appointed by the emperor, but in many cases, the emperors of Japan faced significant pressure to confer the title of shogun to a particular individual. After all, the shogun controlled the vast military forces of the empire, and in many cases, particularly later in the Tokugawa era, um, they were among the largest um, landholders. Some shoguns, in essence, became de facto rulers of Japan. The Sengoku era which is known as the Warring States period or Warring States era, was known for significant social turmoil, political conspiracies, and almost perpetual uh, military conflict. This period extended from approximately the middle of the 16th century to the start of the 17th century. And one of the results of this era was the gradual consolidation of Japan into increasingly larger states, while simultaneously this lengthy period of near-constant warfare led many Japanese to, to long for a time of peace. Interestingly, the arrival of the Europeans in Japan started in 1543, and European traders and missionaries initially received more favorable receptions than they would later receive. Uh, some of the military and political leaders of the time uh, hoped to benefit from ties with the Europeans, at least in terms of the ongoing um, civil war in Japan. Totoyomi Hideyoshi was a daimyo a powerful daimyo, a general, and a politician who united the various political factions of Japan during the Warring States period. Um, his efforts brought to a conclusion uh, this Sengoku, or Warring States, era. Hideyoshi is known as the second great unifier in Japanese history. His predecessor, Oda Nobunaga, was the first, while his successor, Tokugawa Ieyasu, who we will have much to talk about later in this presentation, was the third great unifier. One of the most important policies uh, Hideyoshi enacted was to decree that only samurai could bear arms. Uh, weapons were confiscated from non-samurai. Uh, Hideyoshi also imposed a rigid class system in which people could not leave the line of work to which they were born. For example, a farmer could not become a merchant, while a samurai technically could not become a farmer under this law. Uh, some daimyo enforced the law more strictly than others in their local areas, but the law did serve to uh, reinforce existing social structures even in places where it was not aggressively um, enforced. Hideyoshi's rule is also noted for imperial expansion, especially his invasion of Korea near the end of his life. Toward the end of the 16th century, powerful states emerged in several regions of Japan. Um, a series of military leaders, as we've talked about, brought about the unification of the land um, in a permanent sense. In 1600, the last of these leaders, Tokugawa Ieyasu, established a military government um, known as the Tokugawa Bakufu. Now, Bakufu uh, translates roughly as tent government. And originally, the term Bakufu referred to the mobile uh, tent headquarters of a military general in the field. Uh, but the term eventually became associated with the shogun's administrative structures. Ieyasu and his descendants ruled the Bakufu as shoguns from uh, approximately 1603 officially um, till the end of the Tokugawa dynasty in 1867. In the 17th century, the shoguns made a number of changes, including moving the capital to Edo, E-D-O, which is present-day Tokyo. Uh, 
Uh, the shoguns prohibited Japanese from traveling abroad, and they outlawed the building of large ships. The shoguns expelled Europeans from Japan, and they prohibited foreign merchants from trading in all but one Japanese port. Uh, the shoguns controlled trade with Asian territories, though they permitted small numbers of Chinese and Dutch merchants to trade in the uh, in the Nagasaki. We'll get to that in a moment. The image on this slide is a 1634 painting of a Red Seal warship. These were armed merchant sailing vessels uh, destined for ports in Southeast Asia for trade. These ships had a red sealed patent on them. You can see the seal flag on the right-hand side of the ship. Issued by the Tokugawa shogunate, this identified them as official vessels. In part, the shoguns wanted to control um, who profited from the trade and, of course, to get their share. But the system was also designed to reduce the problem of piracy. Dejima is an artificial island in Nagasaki Harbor. Um, it was designed as a place for foreign merchants and ships to gather. You can see it on this image here. Um, eventually, only the Dust East India Company, known by the acronym the VOC, um, were the only uh, Europeans, at least, who could trade at Dejima. The Dutch were not permitted to leave the island of Dejima and travel in Japan without state officials being present. And uh, when they were on those rare occasions, um, the Dutch were limited to just a few stops at government offices. Um, this, again, was an attempt to sort of um, insulate and isolate um, the Japanese from the, uh, as, as was termed, the contagion or the um, danger that represented uh, from outside influences. No religious books were permitted in Dejima. Uh, Christian services were banned in Dejima. Um, yet the Dutch were actually quite happy with this arrangement, um, despite the limitations on religion, uh, because their willingness to forego military, excuse me, missionary activities meant that they had a near monopoly of trade with Japan for almost 200 years. The Ieyasu uh, philosophy of reorganizing the daimyo was built on a system of rewarding allies and punishing enemies. He divided the daimyo up into three basic groups. The fudai, or F-U-D-A-I, or the house daimyo, were the most trusted, while the tozama, T-O-Z-A-M-A, -A, or the outside daimyo, were the least trusted. There was a th third group known as the shimpan, S-H-I-M-P-A-N, uh, which translates as uh, like auxiliary or collateral daimyo. They had distant family connections to the Tokugawa, and uh, they were thus somewhat more trusted than the Tozama. Um, the Edo hostage system was another method by which the shogun kept the daimyo in check. In any year, um, half the daimyo were in Edo, and the other half in their own domain or hans. Um, in the year that the daimyo went back to their own han, uh, here's the tricky part. They had to leave their family, you know, wife and children, behind in Edo as hostages. So the both the hostage system and the uh, considerable cost of travel back and forth to Edo discouraged rebellion. Pretty effective system, although rather harsh. Uh, the process of reorganization further consolidated Japanese political units. And by this time, only about 200 daimyo were in control of the Hans. Uh, finally, there was a series of land reclamation projects and new agricultural techniques that led to the population of Japan doubling from 1600 to 1700. In 1603, as mentioned earlier, uh, with Ieyasu Tokugawa as the new shogun, the process of restoring central authority went into high gear. Technically, Ieyasu was only shogun for two years, um, but he did a tricky thing where he... Um, he uh, sort of retired, officially retired, in 1605 and, and made his son the new shogun. But his son was essentially you know, following the orders of Ieyasu from that point forward. He issued uh, strict edicts defining who could marry, particularly with regard to the daimyo. He was uh, you know, worried about marriage alliances between daimyo as, as ways of uh, uh, destroying the political order. Uh, he also outlawed the construction of new castles, or the repair of existing castles without shogunate approval. Uh, strict limits were placed on overseas travel, and in most cases, Japanese who traveled overseas were not permitted to return. Again, this idea of contagion or uh, contamination by foreigners. 
um, was behind this philosophy. Uh, in 1549, the Jesuit missionary Francis Xavier traveled to Japan and opened a mission there. Uh, several powerful daimyo adopted Christianity and ordered their subjects to become converts. By the end of the Sengoku era, or the Warring States era, there was about 150,000 uh, Japanese who had become Christians. Tokugawa shoguns restricted European access to Japan, in part for fear that Christianity might allow for alliances between daimyo and Europeans. Um, but there was also a, a religious aspect to this, uh, to these restrictions. Buddhist and Confucian scholars kind of resented Christian teachings that uh, Christianity was the only true faith. Uh, moreover, I think most importantly, Christianity represented a real threat to the existing social order. By Christian ethics, all were equal under the eyes of God, including the shogun and emperor. And this was kind of contrary to um, the existing um, social hierarchy in Japan. As a result, uh, the shogun and his supporters initiated an enforcement of very strict laws to close Christian missions in Japan by 1612. Um, they tortured and executed European missionaries who remained in the country despite these decrees. Um, in addition, Japanese Christians who refused to abandon their faith were executed. Now, it's, again, in some daimyo or in some Han controlled by daimyo, this was very strictly enforced, and others perhaps a little less, where they were you know, willing to overlook a few Christians here or there. Uh, many victims were executed by crucifixion or incineration. Uh, by the late 17th century, though, the anti-Christian policies resulted in thousands of victims, and uh, Christianity not only became an underground religion, but was almost exterminated in Japan as a result of these policies. The image on this slide uh, is of a memorial built in the 20th century in Nagasaki to honor the victims of the anti-Christian campaign. This 17th century painting depicts the execution of several dozen Christians in Japan. You can see what looks to be um, uh, friars, I think, in brown frocks in the center. The Tokugawa effort to restore central authority uh, resulted in approximately 200 years of general peace in Japan, an end to this uh, extensive period of civil war. Samurai culture and the Bushido code became very ingrained in Japanese society. The samurai, traditionally, again, the warrior class, uh, began to take on new roles, serving the daimyo and the shogun as advisors or subordinate uh, state officials. Uh, the Tokugawa era is noted for the stability of the Japanese social structure, in addition to political stability. Um, the isolation that occurred due to the banning of outsiders and the banning of uh, Japanese returning as travelers contributed to growing Japanese nationalism. And this helped uh, develop a strong national Japanese identity as well, which again had been very regional um, and Han-based prior to the Tokugawa era. The rise and development of a mercantile class or merchant class is a feature of Tokugawa Japan, uh, while this era is simultaneously noted for the gradual impoverishment of the samurai. Um, finally, the Edo system um, had a number of unintended consequences or unexpected consequences. Um, the uh, Edo system, hostage system, uh, forced the daimyo to frequently travel back and forth, while the growth of merchant wealth increased internal trade. And as a result of these two factors, a national transportation network emerged during the Tokugawa era. Um, a unified Japanese language and culture were other um, perhaps unintended consequences of Tokugawa policies. Though if you were alive at the time and thought forward a bit, it probably would um, uh, be implicit in some of those policies, especially the, the banning of foreigners. Um, during the Tokugawa era, uh, there was a significant shift to a money-based economy. Um, I think this was another unintended effect of Tokugawa policies, and this uh, eventually disrupted traditional structures over time, particularly with regard to the samurai and the daimyo, and the growth in uh, power of merchants. Um, groups like rice dealers, pawnbrokers, and uh, uh, merchants soon controlled more wealth than the ruling elites as a result of a number of these Tokugawa policies. Uh, this brings to a close our brief look at Tokugawa Japan.